Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, episode number 17, titled Finishing Projects on Time and on Budget with Beth Livingston. And I am super excited about this episode because I have trouble finishing projects both on time and on budget. How about you, Matt? Oh, yeah. No, I've, uh, I've actually got a current client that uh, would be a good um, a good way to to bring this conversation to life, I think. Well, we'll make sure we'll get your questions in to Beth too. You're allowed to ask questions just like everybody that's watching us live. I don't know if we'll be able to answer all 750 of you that are joining us, but uh, hopefully we'll get to most of your questions. So of course, I am Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design uh, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me is Matt from Matthew Siebert Design. Uh, anything new you want to tell us about today, Matt, before we get started? Um, no, I, I actually, I'd really like to get this uh, this episode started so I can uh, we can finish the episode and then I can maybe get my client to, to get me the content that I need. Awesome. Well, let's, let's dive into it. So as I said, we have Beth Livingston with us today from North Carolina, correct? Yes. Awesome. Well, Beth, I am so glad you're here and I'm super geeked out and excited about this episode. So before we dive into this secret sauce you've told us about, uh, why don't you tell us all a little bit about yourself and your history and, and how you found yourself on the admin bar today? Okay. So um, I was an IT business analyst and project manager and instructional designer for years and years and years in the corporate world. And when I left that industry in 2016, I, well, I had, I had started kind of a side hustle using WordPress and fell in love with it. And I had several websites for myself. And then I started developing websites for other people. And as I started going to word camps and I started getting to know other practitioners, everybody's got the same problems and there are problems that I know how to fix because it's what we've done in corporate for years and years. And so many WordPress developers, designers, consultants, agencies are just like you, Kyle. They came out of another industry. They found out, gosh, I don't have to be a programmer to build a website. I can use WordPress and, you know, it's great. But the problem is you might have a great creative and a great programmer and they're building beautiful websites, but they don't know anything about project management. They don't teach this kind of stuff in school and they actually don't even teach it at the big project management schools. You get a lot of book learning, but not really the day to day how to really do stuff, you know? So I said, you know, why don't I do what everybody says you're supposed to do and take your skills and strengths and use those in a way that makes you happy. And I love teaching people things and I love helping people with stuff. So that's when I decided to shift WP roadmaps and coaching. I was trying to do roadmaps for people building websites for themselves in WordPress to kind of show them all the shortcuts and all of that. Well, there's a gazillion people doing that. And so I decided that my best route was to help other WordPress practitioners. So I kind of did a pivot and that's where I am now. Awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm totally with you. I, I credit, you know, I, I had 15 years or so as a graphic designer. So like the, the design side of this, I felt pretty comfortable with right away. But what I see a lot of people struggle with too, is like the running the business aspect, you know? So, uh, you know, that's not the same thing. Being, being talented at doing graphic design and being a, somebody who can run a business is, is, very different. And at the same time, being able to uh, manage a business and manage projects and all that, that's, that's a whole nother ball game. So when you're running one of these businesses, especially by yourself, you're, you're having to wear a ton of hats, even though I only wear one, uh, you know, <laughs> metaphorically, I'm wearing a ton and doing a whole lot of things. I mean, when it comes to like having to do accounting, like I called Matt the other day because I was pulling my hair out for two hours because I couldn't get my books to balance. And I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, like, this is such a waste of my time. So I, I am excited to uh, kind of hear what you got going on today. So I know me and Matt both kind of struggle with some of these problems. But as we get started into this conversation, Matt, why don't you kind of tell us, you alluded to a, a problem you've had with the customer. Why don't you kind of tell us and kind of set the scene of what's going on with that? And uh, maybe Beth can start uh, shedding some light on it for us. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got a, uh, a current client. The uh, the build is maybe a quarter of the way through. Um, I got a bit of copy in the beginning, um, just enough to really like you know start laying out that homepage and, and get the uh, the design up and running. 
uh, with everything else promised later. Unfortunately, um, he's in a, a position with his business where there are definitely things that are happening that are taking priority over this. Um, so unfortunately, as much as a, uh, as, as a, a bug in his ear as I've been, and as much as he knows that he needs to get that, that content to me before anything can progress, he's putting out fires elsewhere. Um, so I'm, I'm just sitting and waiting basically at this point. So kind of, I, I know that's probably a familiar story you've heard before, right? So where where would you say the, the first part he might have gone wrong uh, in that situation would be? Starting design before you had all the content, mm-hmm. all of it. So um, let me just tell you a little bit about my secret sauce. Okay, anytime you do have a secret sauce, you start with a roux, all right? And, and for those of you who aren't cooks, a roux is just your base, right? And so... The, the roux for this is you've got to shift three mindsets, okay? The first one is stop giving quotes. A quote is like when your, your contractor is going to build you a fence. So he comes out and he measures and he, he knows exactly what he's going to need. He knows exactly the number, how much wood, exactly all the materials he's going to need. There's no question about how this, what the end product is going to look like. But with websites, they there's no way that you have a crystal ball or your client has a crystal ball to know you can ask a bazillion questions, but there's going to be something you forgot to ask or something they forgot to tell you. And then that comes along later as, Oh, a change. Right. And so um, there's always going to be change. I mean, has anybody ever had a project where you didn't have at least one change, even if it was minor? Oh yeah. And I I get the ones where they, they say like, Oh, I just need this one little thing changed. I'm like one little thing. This is like, we got to redo everything at this point, you know, but they have no way of knowing that. I mean, they're not web developers, so they don't understand that this one little thing they're asking for requires, you know, we got to have some kind of membership thing now and recurring invoices and all, you know, it's just just like a total restructure of the, uh, of the site. Yeah. Well, that's why if you start with content, those, and you make them get, well, we'll go back and talk about later about sometimes the client is not really the best one to do the content because that's not their strong suit and they do have a business to run. Mm-hmm. And as much as they really want that website, their business is always going to take priority. You can't really blame them for that. But then we ding them for change and stuff and act like it's a penalty. So, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. The first thing is stop giving quotes, give estimates, make it clear. It's an estimate until you delve deep into the design. And so what I use is a two-step proposal process. I do the initial proposal and use a range of cost and a range of time. And then um, after the statement of work, which is super, super detailed, and we've asked all the questions and we've gathered all the content, then I'm able to set, then you're able to find those things along the way. And if that second estimate exceeds the proposal estimate, I give the client the option to back out but they have rarely ever do because they were involved in that whole process and they realize, Oh, we found something we had to add to. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say the first mind shift is stop giving quotes and stop acting like you have a crystal ball and that you have all the answers. And I mean, you know, I know that everybody's out there looking for work and you want the job, but you can't act like that, you know, everything and that you're not going to make any mistakes. Just let the client know this is not how it goes. That's not how web design actually works. And um, I'm looking at my notes occasionally to make sure that I don't forget to tell you anything. No, you're good. Um, so in, in that, um, I have, well, we'll talk about my the course later, but in that course that I just released, there's a whole um, section on that two-step proposal process and how to manage that, as well as restructuring your payment schedule to make sure that you get paid up front. Okay. The other thing Um, about the stop giving quotes is stop padding your quotes. The pad is bad. (laughs) And the reason the pad is bad is because you have no way of knowing what you're actually using that pad for. You know, was it because of this thing that you forgot? Was it because of that thing the client forgot? And if you're not measuring that thing from project to project to project, there's no way to get better. So um, I have a, we'll talk about that's a magic ingredient and I'll talk about that at the end. Um, about how to fix that. Uh, The second thing is be brutally honest with the client. This is another mind shift. 
at the very beginning. And so Matt, I'm sorry, I don't know how much of this is going to help you now that you're stuck at that point with the client, but for the next client, it might help is you just be brutally honest with them about the way that club that 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 projects usually get off track. It usually has to do with content, waiting on the client for things, um, explain how scope creep happens, but that you have a, a, a way to control that, presuming that you do. I do. I can teach it to you. Um, and that a plan is just a plan. That's why they call it a plan. It's not carved in granite on day one. Um, you make a plan, just like we make plans to go somewhere and then the car breaks down. You know, you can't go. So right. that's why a plan. And, and you need to really make it very, very clear to them that they have to be available for approval of interim deliverables. This is a team effort. You're not going to hand it off to me. I'm going to go off and do it and then bring you back this shiny, beautiful website. Um, let's see. Uh, you I, I do. I do want to interject there real quick, if I might. Um, sure. I, I talk too much. Just no, 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 no. <laughs> you're, you're good. You're good. I'm super geeky about this stuff. So I get really passionate about it. No, so me too. Interrupt me. That's why I have to hear my, my voice rattle for a second. No. Uh, so, I've actually found a way to kind of you talked about that being brutally honest and talking about, you know, this being a team effort. I've I've kind of found a way, a cue that reminds me to have that conversation. And it's when the customer and I think every customer asks when we're doing, you know, maybe a discovery meeting or something like that, they'll ask, how long is this going to take? And I can't answer that question because I'll say, you know, I have some projects that literally we've started the website on Monday and launched it on Friday. And that's because the customer came to me with content ready to go, knew exactly what they wanted. I can knock this out of the park for them real quickly. I have other projects that have been going on for well over a year now. And it's not because I haven't got things done. My part's been done, you know, within 24 hours of them giving me anything. It's because I'm still waiting on content. So, you know, I can easily say this project will take anywhere between a week and two years, uh, but a lot of that's going to depend on you. So that's kind of my, been my cue for having that conversation. Uh, so maybe that's a helpful tip for somebody else as well. And in the content collection roadmap, I do cover how to determine if your client is the best one to pull the content together or not. I mean, there are, there are signs, um, you know, there are stop signs, <laughs> roadmap signs that say, wait a minute, they are, com everybody's completely overworked at this company, or they're just getting ready to get to do a big expansion. Any of those kinds of things are a definite, and, unless they've got somebody totally dedicated to content, mm -hmm. to getting that stuff together for you. Um, another tip is to consider incenting the client to meet their dates. If you meet all your dates that we've, and, oh, well, let me back up a minute. Make sure that you and your client discuss that project plan together and that they have input into what their dates are and that they're okay with that. And then incent <laughs> them to meet those dates. Like you get a discount if you meet all your dates or you get a certain number of points. You can gamify it even. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a certain number of points for meeting uh, so many dates. And then if you get that many points, you get a 10% discount or whatever, you know, of course, now I said, don't pad the quote, but you might have to up your price a little bit to be able to give that discount. But that's hey, if I can get the job done quicker, I don't mind giving a discount. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So give them an incentive for getting it done. I mean, make it as important. You know what? That's always money, always money. So, um, you know, Matt, in your case, I, maybe you can still do that. You know, if you'll get this content to me by X date, I'll give you X dollars off this project or percentage off this project. So that's one thing you might could do. Or you could give them Maddie points. <laughs> Don't tell them what they're good for. <laughs> you can make up little fake dollar bills, you know, yeah, right. face on yeah, the front. Absolutely. <laughs> Maddie dollars. I like it. Um, okay. And then the third mind shift to make mind shift thing to make and everybody talks about this but it's not as so it's not so easy to implement and that is you're shopping for the perfect client. I know we all need to pay the bills and we all want that job, but if you can tell right off the bat that that client is probably not going to be able to comply or or they they're kind of hesitant about agreeing to comply to what your processes are, move on to the next client. The secret sauce only works if your client understands your processes and agrees to abide by them at the very beginning. And I'm not meaning that you have to, you know, take an, an ugly attitude or anything, but it's kind of like arrogance, but 
in a nice way. Does that, does that make sense? No, it's confidence. Yeah. I mean, it's understanding what you do. And I think not only does your client need to understand what your process is, I'm self admittedly in the phase of I need to understand what my process is because every project I've done has been a little bit different. And, you know, uh, here in the last, I don't know, couple months, uh, <clears throat> I've been more conscious about like writing down steps I'm taking as we go through different parts of the project and creating lists and checklists and stuff like that. So I can save those and kind of reuse them for next time. So that's uh, just as important for yourself as it is for your client, but there's no way your client's ever going to understand if you don't understand yourself, you know, or if you don't have some kind of formula to go off of. So, so with those things there, does that, does that complete our rue? Are we ready to, ready to? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That was a perfect awesome. segue into the, uh, what, what is now the, uh, adding the spice and flavor to the roux. I'm and pretty much a professional at this point. 17 episodes in, I got segues <laughs> down. And you didn't even know you were supposed to segue there, but you did. Thank you. Um, okay. So back in the day when I worked for a consulting firm based out of Boston called Keen, and they are now NTT Data, if anybody's familiar. Um, well, they kind of got ate up. But anyway, John Keen developed the six principles of productivity management for software development. I took those six principles and modified them a little bit for WordPress because they work. They work whether you're tiling your kitchen or whether you're doing a, a, a web development project. I mean, it, it's the same principles. And the first one is define the job in detail. And I added with a content first approach. We all know that. But what are the steps? What, what, what is it I need to really do? One of the biggest reasons for scope creep is failure to fully um, to fully define the project at the very beginning. And that's why I take that two step proposal process, because nobody who's out there taking um, uh, proposals from different providers has the time, you know, and besides, you don't want to do all that work and then not get the job. So yeah. you don't want to do the detailed, detailed, detailed proposal. You need enough to get a, a decent site map. That's all you really need for your proposal to understand what are all the pages <clears throat> they need. Because once you know what the pages they need are, then you can decide what the content is. What is the rough order of magnitude of the content? How much text is there going to be? How many, in, you know, are you going to put two images estimating two images per page? Then you know exactly how many images have to be pulled together, right? And once you, here's the other thing is once you show the client that rough order of magnitude, if, if what you're pushing for is to hire a third party or let you do the content, because there are some providers who do, who can do the content. Um, once you show them that rough order of magnitude, it's a really good selling tool for getting someone else to do it. Because <laughs> you're not, you're not going to be the best one to do this. Um, and if you structure it properly, you get, you can get paid up front so that, um, when you, after you've defined all that, and then the client says, uh, um, if you, if you structure the payment schedule properly, when you get to the end of the statement of work, then, um, I'm trying to, to, to articulate this. Let me look at my notes. I'm sorry. No, you're all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, you, basically, you end up getting paid before the content begins, and then you can say, "Okay, I know this is this is the the milestone that 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 is going to determine the rest of the project." And if they don't deliver, you've you've worked into your processes and had that discussion with the client that if you don't deliver the content by the date that we all agreed on, I'm going on to other stuff. And when you get that content together, that does not mean that I'm going to jump right back on your project. That's just the way it is. Yeah. I'm going to respect the way you do business. Now you need to respect the way I do business. And so, um, you know, because also um, it would need to not position it so that change is like this um, penalty, right? If you have a change, if you didn't get it all right up front, then I'm going to have to charge you extra dollars for this and extra dollars for that. And maybe you will, but act like it's a normal thing. That's, that's just the way things go. Yeah, it is yeah. a normal thing. Um, right. Chad actually just hopped in on the, uh, the chat and said that the, uh, the best tactic to head off scope creep is the, uh, the first time a client asks for something that's out of scope, simply reply with, quote, yes, we can do that. Would you like me to get an estimate? And that, uh, that basically, you know, they'll learn early on that these requests end up costing more because they're outside that initial scope. 
Um, to add to that, I like using the uh, the phrase, which I learned. Who was it from, uh, Kyle, from uh, WordCamp last year? Uh, the phase two. Like, oh. that's a fantastic idea. We'll hit that <laughs> in phase two. Yeah, I do right. remember that. Yeah. Right. I'm saying that discussion should happen way before the first change they ask for. Mm -hmm. I think it should be clearly spelled out in your proposal and you need to have a frank discussion with the client about change up front to say, look, I don't have a crystal ball. You don't either. So let's just say we're going to do the best job we can. And that's first step. And then we'll go into the nitty gritty detail after you're paying me money. Right. Um, so regardless of who's doing the content, it needs to be finished before that's the content first approach before you start doing, I mean, you might do a design mock-up for approval, but no development. Cause we, cause here's what happens. You start developing the content thing is right in the middle and then the client doesn't deliver. And then you think, well, I'll just go ahead and finish it. And that way, when they get the content ready, I can just plop it in there. I know Kyle's raising his hand. It happens all guilty, the time. Guilty, guilty, guilty. you get all the way through and you're sitting there just waiting to get paid, waiting, 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 waiting. So don't do that. Do not do that. Okay. Set, we're, it's 20 minutes in. I want to make sure I get to the rest of this. The second um, principle is get the right resources involved. Makes sense. Common sense, right? Those resources are people, plugins, themes, blocks. That's a new one. And hosting, right? So if you don't already have a standard set of technical plugins, and most people do that they use on all their websites, um, and then also a standard set of business plugins. If somebody needs a store, are you a WooCommerce lover? then you know you already know that you have those plugins in place. Um, sorry, page two. Y'all are probably too young to know who Paul Harvey is, but he used to be this radio announcer. And every time he'd get ready to, he'd get about halfway through his talk and then he'd go page two. <laughs> okay, so that was page two. Um, the, the next thing is break the job down. So if you don't already have a project management uh, or development methodology that you follow and use an actual project plan, then you're probably going to end up with um, scope creep. And, and that project plan is important too, because you need to review that with the client and make sure that they are okay with the milestones, the dates, the deliverables that you need approvals on and the dates that you need those things by. And if they go, Oh wait, I'm going on vacation that week. Then before you ever start the project, you've already made allowances for that. So, um, that, so that's the third thing, break the job down. The fourth yeah, one. I actually, I actually just did that with a client I'm working with right now. We just started on a project this week and I'm moving next week. And <clears throat> luckily I thought about that to tell him before when we were talking about that timeline process. I'm like, uh, but for about three days, you're not going to hear from me at all because I'm going to be unavailable, you know? So, right. so it is important. Not, Most people yeah. are, t he was totally fine with that because I told him up front. However, if I would have wrote him after I was uh, unavailable and said, oh, so sorry, you know, uh, I'm not here. You know, that wouldn't have been a good deal. Exactly. So that's why getting the client involved on the planning end is so important. And um, the complete, the, the, the big thing that I'm working on is the complete project management roadmap for WordPress. And that'll be from the beginning to the end. Now, it doesn't really cover the business part of things as much as it does managing the project itself. There's a little crossover and, the, and managing the client. Um, and I will be giving in that roadmap, I'll be having sample project plans that you can just take, move it around, change whatever you want to change, add in what you normally do, but it'll be the basics. And there'll be like, if this is a, if this is updating a website or a brand new website and all the steps that you need to follow. And I think that'll help people a great deal. Um, the next principle, first, we had to find the job in detail with a content first approach, get the right resources involved break the job down and then estimate the time and cost. Here's another thing that doesn't happen just one time. You have to continue to estimate throughout the project because things change. And the only way to get better at estimating is to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But, but just keeping doing it doesn't help if you don't know exactly where you made the mistake last time, right? Or where you could have done a better job. And so you need to measure those things as you, you need a repeatable process. And so in that, um, content collection roadmap, I created a spreadsheet that helps you do that whole rough order of magnitude for the content, which is a good place to start with um, estimating. 
in terms of how much time it's going to take, who's going to do all that work with the content and so on and so forth. And I bet when you start taking note of all those things and doing project after project, you start seeing patterns of where this is where the breakdown happens a lot. And these are the things I need to worry about, you know, and without like actually taking note of those things, at least mentally, but probably physically taking note of those things. It's really hard to see those patterns that, you know, it just happens so sporadically. You don't really have a good way to, uh, estimate in the future where that happens. But when you start making a plan like that, I can see how uh, you'd, you'd be much better prepared and being able to see where those things happen. Yeah. And I mean, when you're doing it yourself, you're so like, you're in the thick of it. You're so close to it that you don't see it. If you were to stand behind yourself and watch, like, I'm sure you would catch all of these things, but I'd be like, you freaking idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not but again. You are just far too close to it. So yeah, you, um, you hit the uh, the obstacle or whatever it is, and you uh, you fix it. You you move forward and you keep keep going. But yeah, like Kyle said, you know, actually taking a physical note and saying this was an issue, and seeing if that arises the next time, and if it is a pattern, fix it. Right. I will say that that what you just said kind of made me think of of how well mine and Matt's relationship has worked out for us, kind of that person standing behind you. And we had an episode with uh, Leanne and Imogen who kind of have an accountability partnership. Um, and I think that's so valuable and things like that because I do have somebody standing behind me telling me I'm an idiot sometimes. And sometimes <laughs> that's just me calling Matt and saying, dude, I can't believe what this customer is doing. He's such an asshole, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then he'll go, didn't that happen before? Why didn't you do this? You know, so uh, it, it is nice to have somebody standing behind you, uh, even if they are just shouting obscenities at you like Matt does to me. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a slight tangent from uh, from the current conversation. But Kyle, you called me the other day and you were, you were upset at one of your clients um, by the method that they chose to uh, to send you a a, a what was it like it was it wasn't a proof it was a uh like a change, change order to, basically yeah, yeah. and you know from from your point of view i totally get it if i got the same email i would probably be a little bit miffed as well but you know my my third party uh objective uh opinion of it was well he's probably doing it this way because it's just easier for him rather than trying to to take a dig at you yourself, trying to spite like, me personally yeah. right Right. Yeah, so it's it's definitely helpful for sure. No doubt. And measurement is everything. If you're not measuring what you do, how can you get any better? So, you know, when I first started putting all this together, not the secret sauce, but the whole project management roadmap, I kept thinking, is this overkill? Is this overkill for a WordPress project? I mean, so many times it is a five page website. Do I really need to do it? Well, yes, you still need to do all of these things so that you know where you're falling short and can get better. I need you behind me because I, I'm the worst at like, uh, I just want to get these things done. Like we're going to skip all that stuff and just knock this out. And then ine inevitably that bites me in the butt. So every uh, developer or programmer or designer in the world is under the, and even me, I mean, I just want to get in and, and build the website. That's what's the fun part. Of course right. we want to get to the fun part. Look, everybody hates project management. I had somebody tell me the other day, I was getting um, feedback on the, on my course and, and I was talking to her on the phone and she said, I don't want to manage projects. I just want to build websites. <laughs> but unfortunately, you better go get a job it, then <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to do it. Okay. The next one, um, the fifth one, and these are really not in a one, two, three order, but the, the fifth one in the list, and this is the big one is establish. And this is the, the key word is and stick to a change management process. How hmm. often have you said to yourself, that's ah, just a small change, I'll just go ahead and do it. The Every day. Time, the first time you do that, then the client expects that the next time and the next time and the next time. Do You can just not do that. And this is, this is where we have a magic ingredient. Okay, mm. this is a magic ingredient to the secret sauce. Establish at the beginning of the project as part of your proposal and your estimate, a change budget. So I take the total amount of the project and I usually use 30%. And I, and I say, okay, this project is, is going to, and, and, and I use this as a selling point too. Look, I'm not going to pad this quote like everybody else that's going to give you an estimate is. I'm going to tell you up front, I already know there's going to be change. There always is. Now we, now in my case, it's not going to be as much because we do this two-step proposal process, but 
you put this money aside in a separate change bucket, a separate change um, budget bucket. And then if a, if they want to change, then you write up the change, you send it to them and say, this is how much is going to come out of that change bu bucket. And then a lot of times they'll go, you know, I think that can wait. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a great point. And actually, I'll do a callback to uh, episode eight. We had Brett Phillips on and he he was talking about pricing your projects for profit. So if anybody's missed that episode, go back and watch that one, because that's a, a very good one talking about pricing. But that's something that he builds into his quotes, too, is kind of like that contingency budget. Uh, I want to say he said his was like 20 percent or something. But really, the number doesn't make a huge difference. But just planning that, hey, things are going to change. And that's exactly what they do in construction. You know what I mean? So if you're having a house built or something, and there's going to be a contingency because things are going to change. So that's, that's a very good point. Something I definitely need to get into my process. And change is not always just a feature change. Change could be, okay, Kyle, let's say you got a $10,000 website. It's huge, right? So you had to take on some extra help. All right. Then you find out that one of your guys is going on vacation. Okay. That you didn't know that at the beginning of the project. That's a change. Because now it's going to change. It's going to change the time. It might not change the budget, but it's going to change the timeline. So even if it doesn't change the money, you still need to go through the process of change. And by putting the client in charge of the change budget, no, that money does not get used until you decide that it gets used. Then that makes them less likely to ask for unnecessary changes mm -hmm. or changes that can wait. The other thing, um, this doesn't have to do with change management, but something I talk about in the content collection roadmap is if you, if that client really needs that website up and you, you know, you're not going to have all the content in time, then propose a minimum viable website. What has to be there on day one? It's just like the phase one, phase two thing, right? But you're backing up to put just the bare bones out there, just to, especially if it's a new website, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting the bare bones out there just to get it done and get something out there and then go back and, and, and schedule that waiting for the content thing. And that might be perfect for your situation. You talked about earlier too, Matt, is you're waiting on him for all this content. Well, maybe you just get him on the phone and say, Hey, we got to get something up. So what do we have to have to get this thing at least online? Right. And what I usually do is go ahead and define the whole solution and then say, okay, which of these things are absolutely critical and then move everything else to the second phase. Um, so that's the magic ingredient where change is concerned is that change budget. And then the last thing is agreeing on acceptance criteria up front. What does it mean to be done? Mm -hmm. What, cause they, Honestly, it's like that little cartoon you've probably seen with the contractor and he's got a picture in his little bubble over his head. And then the, the wife has a picture of a different looking house and the husband has a picture of a different looking house. Right. You have to, to say what is done and not just what is done at the end. And saying that the website's live is not enough. You know, you need to go back to your initial requirements and say, okay, there's this many pages. There's this many products in the store you can get to those products. It's sort of like a test plan, but those are, those are your, um, those criteria that you agree on with the client up front. How many times have you ever had the situation where you think you're done and the client says, yeah, but I thought you were going to also do X. Yeah. You know? And that's because you didn't have written up that for this to be an accepted deliverable, it's got to have these things. And I'm not, and you do that for the end product, but you should also be doing that for your interim deliverables, like your site map. Okay. So, um, you want to make sure that you agree up front what has to be on the site map for it to be accepted. So let me back up and do a little bit of a review. You've got your roux, you've got your six principles that are the spice and the um, flavor. And your magic ingredients are the two-step proposal process because that lets you define the job in detail up front, the change budget, and using that content-first approach with a restructured payment schedule so when you get to the content task, you're paid up. So you haven't done any work that you haven't already been paid for. And a lot of times, because this, I go into so much detail on the front end, that the deposit I get at the beginning is more than 50% mm. because my phase one, <clears throat> pardon me, my phase one and phase two, where I do all that 
takes the lot. Look, we all know it doesn't take that long to build a WordPress website. I mean, come on. If you've got everything you need, you can boom, bang, boom, just like you were saying, Kyle. Yeah. So the majority of the project is figuring out what does it need to look like. Um, and so then when we get to that content task, I just, I'm okay because I've already been paid. And if they don't, if, and then when I said, you know, about the two step proposal process and the statement of work, if they, if, if the second, if the statement of work exceeds the proposal estimate and they do decide to bail at that point, I've already been paid for it. So I don't care here. Take this, take it to the next guy, take it to that Fiverr guy who says he's going to build you a website for a hundred bucks. Go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You paid me and you paid me well. So I do want to say here, I know you, you want, uh, we need to get to, uh, promoting what you have going on. But before we do that, I want to read something that just came across in the comments here. I think I saw Matt eye in it too. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah. <clears throat> we have a comment here that says, uh, Beth is amazing at all of this, y'all. I'm a client of hers and her techniques work great for the client. And for the record, my house renovations budget was completely shot. But Beth's budgeting and estimates for my website project were spot on. She made it super easy for us to get our website built. It was one of the smoothest processes I've ever been involved in. So I just got to know, Beth, how much did you pay Jen to say all those nice things about you? Because that's a, that's a heck of a testimonial. Well, I, she's in California, too. So she had to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning to, to get Holy on this Lord. podcast. and. I just told her about it and she said, Oh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Jen's great. Uh, we great. met at a business That's conference for another online uh, provider. And um, then when she needed her website, she actually had two websites that she put together. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, she would call me up and go, Oh my God, I forgot about this. or I need to add this. You know, I know it's going to cost extra. Just tell me how much. I mean, when have you ever had a client do like that? But that's because everything was spelled up, out, uh, spelled out up front. She knew exactly what to expect when there was a change. Well, I know uh, you you had posted in our group the other day, giving some people some access to your course if they were giving you some feedback. And I know you closed that out, but you are going to have this course open. So I definitely want my customer to hop on a video I'm on and leave me a testimonial like that. Like that's the ultimate, uh, I mean, that's a huge pat on the back to what you've accomplished for your customer to get up early, uh, join this live call, listen to you, and then tell everybody how awesome you are. I've never had a customer like that. So if I want customers like that. So why don't you tell us about how we can all achieve that, uh, that level of satisfaction with our customers? Okay. So um, I was working on the big giant complete project management roadmap for WordPress, and I'm still hoping that that's going to be delivered by the end of this quarter, but it's a little iffy. Um, but what I have out there now is um, I stopped because everybody was having these issues with content. So I created, pardon me, <clears throat> the uh, WordPress website content collection roadmap. And it's out there on my website. The first lesson is free for everybody. And that'll give you an idea of, is it something you like? Do you want to, you want to invest or not? The course is normally $119. And um, there's an automatic $20 discount right now. Cause again, I'm still trying to, to get people to look at my stuff and give me feedback. Um, but for everybody listening to this podcast, you can actually get a $50 discount on that price by using the code. Everybody ready? Because I'm only going to say this one. Admin bar. Nice. <laughs> See, so, there are perks to being in this group, everybody. <laughs> so we'll we'll put a link to the uh, the course in the show notes, but we'll leave the uh, the the coupon code out of it so people have to get to this part to to hear for that. So that's right. That's big right. shout out! Thank you for doing that for our our uh, our audience, I guess. But that's that's super awesome. That's a huge. Well, you know, I'm just getting started with with putting this stuff out there, and I do so appreciate feedback from anyone. Um, to let me know am I heading in the right direction or this was just super complicated or are you serious? That is way too much overkill for WordPress or whatever your opinion is, negative or positive, I'd love to hear it. And so that's one reason I'm doing this discount. Plus, I just love you guys. <laughs> I mean, you, I, I, I'm in a lot of groups, okay? But this group is full of so many helpful, kind and nice people and everybody's so relaxed and nobody's getting all bent out of shape. You know, I, I just, I'm, I enjoy being a member of this group. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Fun. And I, 
we've gotten that feedback from several people and i'd like to tell you tell everybody that we me and matt had this like grand plan to make a group that was just like that but we didn't it, we just happened to collect some of the best people uh, on the internet so yeah. we're extremely lucky and thankful for everybody that's part of the group because i agree uh you know i'm a little bit partial but i definitely get the most value out of out of posting things and reading from people in this group so and real quick, that. Kyle, um, uh, so uh, you just have to go to WPRoadmaps.com, and there's a couple of other freebies on my site. I have a little mini course that is free, and it's about those six principles that I just went over. And the other one is um, uh, how to do the wording in your proposal to prevent scope creep on the front end. So, And that's just a tip sheet. And then I also have a Facebook group called WordPress Project Management, if anybody's interested in getting in there. And, and where you guys are more focused on the business end of things, I'm focusing strictly, I'm niching down into, nice. <laughs> into more just the project management. I mean, you know, Troy Dean and WP Elevation, I'm, I've never, I'm not a member, I haven't joined there. But he does a really good job of the business end of WordPress too, but his stuff is really expensive. My stuff is not going to be that expensive because I know we're all in the same boat of struggling to make ends meet. So, yeah, well, definitely get us. Uh, we'll get all those links from you when we close out the show so we can make sure we post all that. I did uh, post the link to WP Roadmaps in the chat right now so everybody can uh, check that out when they get on there. Man, I, I don't know about you, Matt, but I'm feeling pretty jazzed up to uh, start getting things in order here because, yeah. uh, I, I'm really blown away by the testimonial. The testimonial live in this uh, in this um, podcast is that that definitely sold me right there. So that was a that was a good move there. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm super excited to check out the course, and I'm going to be in there as well. So uh, I, I hope we can have some discussions about it here yeah. in the group. So if you don't want to miss out on uh, all the goodness we're talking about, you should probably join so you can uh, be part of the know. Well, Beth, we certainly appreciate you uh, getting on here with us today. You'll have to bear with us one second while we do a little bit of housekeeping, and uh, and then we'll wrap this thing up and be done with it. Sound good? Did you did you, you found this helpful? Yes. Oh my oh, yeah, gosh, absolutely. yes, for sure. I, I'm you know I, I don't always listen back to our episodes because it's kind of weird to like especially hear yourself. I've almost gotten used to seeing myself because I'm watching myself right now, but to listen to myself, I feel like I'm an idiot. Uh, but I will <laughs> definitely be going back and listening to this and taking notes. I can't take notes while I'm doing this or I'll forget what I'm doing. So I definitely want to go back and take notes. So I appreciate this. So we'll be uh, we'll be definitely promoting this. I know there'll be lots of comments on all this for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that uh, I will. I'm pretty sure that Kyle will uh, will both go through the. Uh, the courses too so that if anybody has questions beth you're in the group you can answer them and kyle and i can also put in our uh, our two cents as well for sure awesome well i am so glad that uh i'm glad that we did this i'm super excited now i love when we get done with these calls and we're all jazzed up about it <laughs> so i do want to say uh next week we are going to have chris castillo on here talking about a new project he's got going on y'all might have heard about it already uh but we're going to dive into that and about outsourcing um for other talent that you need for your agency and and some new ways you might be able to do that so that's going to be super exciting uh the following week Adam Lacey is going to be on here talking about uh, his new um, software Split Hero, which does A-B testing for WordPress like nothing else in WordPress does, uh, which is something that I've already purchased and, and I'm really looking forward to. It's kind of in a, in a pre-sale right now. I want to say he's already uh, sold all the licenses he's going to sell in the pre-sale. I think they're all sold out, uh, but he's going to come on and talk to us about kind of how that system's going to work. And really if anybody's ever done kind of like in a, a pre-sale AB split testing with WordPress uh, and with page builders, it's really difficult to do. And uh, this is going to make it super simple. So that's going to be a great episode to check out. Um, and Beth said in here uh, today that, you know, she appreciates this group and, and me and Matt both get messages from people here and there uh, telling us thank you. And we certainly appreciate it. And, you know, this group's only as good as the people that are in it. So we thank you all for making this what it is. Uh, we had a couple people ask us, uh, you know, how they can help us out. So one would be just be present in the group. 
you know, contribute to the conversation, help people out. Uh, don't be a jerk is I think our only group rule and people seem to follow that uh, pretty much to a T. So that's awesome. The other way you can help us, uh, you know, me and Matt both do spend a ton of time in the admin bar group, planning shows, doing these shows, uh, ignoring family, ignoring clients, uh, ignoring pets. Um, we do have a page on our website, theadminbar.com. Uh, if you hover over what's on tap, there's a tab at the very bottom that says recommendations. There is about nine products on there, which are affiliate links. Uh, they're only things that we use. We didn't want to just spam a bunch of affiliate links on the website. So they're only products that we use. Not saying you got to go out and buy these things, but if you do plan on buying any of these things, if you click on our affiliate link, we get a little bit of money. It helps us not feel so bad about ignoring everyone while we do this. <laughs> and we'd certainly appreciate it. Obviously, it doesn't cost y'all anymore. So uh, everybody wins in that situation. So we didn't want to do a bunch of shameless plugs and begging for money, but we'll certainly take the affiliate money if y'all are planning on buying that kind of stuff anyway. So did I cover that all right, Matt? Oh, yeah. Well said. Absolutely. Okay. Do you got anything else to add to this, Matt, before we uh, hop off of here? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, I, like you said, I am, I'm excited to, uh, to hop off and start implementing some of this stuff. No doubt. Well, Beth, thank you so much again for coming on. Uh, I'm sure that there will be, we had quite a few people join us uh, during this live, but usually these videos get quite a few comments afterwards. So uh, I'm sure you'll be back around to check in and see what everybody has to say. So if anybody has any questions, make sure you uh, reach out on there and we'll get all the links posted into the comments on this and onto the website and all that. And I'm going to shut up now. So for Matt and myself and Beth, thank y'all so much for joining us today. And we'll see you next week on episode 18 with Chris Castillo. Bye. See ya. <laughs>